and welcome to this tutorial about using Adobe Dynamic Link for the After Effects workflow. I've previously done a tutorial on using Adobe Dynamic Link for the Premiere Pro workflow which is actually slightly more complex because there are more options but this particular tutorial is dedicated to the After Effects workflow so that you can incorporate Premiere Pro projects in After Effects and then export them out. Now one word of warning Adobe Dynamic Link only works as a suite based option. What I mean by that is if you have purchased Adobe Premiere Pro as a separate item to Adobe After Effects, you can't get Dynamic Link between Premiere Pro and After Effects. You can get Adobe Dynamic Link between Premiere Pro, the Media Encoder and Encore because they're all bundled together. But if you have bought Premiere Pro separately to After Effects, then you'll not be able to do what I'm demonstrating today. If, however, you have bought either the Master Suite or the Production Premium, then you will be able to use these options because you'll get the full Dynamic Link because it is a suite-based option. Now, how does Adobe Dynamic Link work? The first thing to say about it is that it is a one-way deal. So what we have is After Effects open, and in the background I've also got Premiere Pro open. So let me just show you Premiere Pro with a sequence of animals, very jerky footage of all kinds of different animals. Now, I haven't done anything to this except cut it up and put it in my timeline. What I want to do in After Effects is, say, do a bit of stabilization or a bit of color correction. I don't want to do it in Premiere Pro, I want to do it in After Effects. Now, this is the way it works. Let me turn on a few of these layers. First thing to say is, if you're going to use Adobe Dynamic Link from the After Effects perspective, then you are going to take Premiere Pro sequences and put them into After Effects it will not then go the other way. If you've pulled a Premiere Pro sequence into After Effects, you can't then send an After Effects composition back into Premiere Pro. This is a one-way deal. So that means that, let me just open up this second one. This is where your export is going to be. So what that means is, if I make a change in Premiere Pro, it will show up in After Effects. But if I make any changes in After Effects, it will not show up in Premiere Pro. And this is the route that I will need to export. I've got my Premiere Pro sequence, which I've dynamically linked and brought into After Effects. Then I do all my additional work in After Effects, and I export it out from After Effects. If I make a color correction change in Premiere Pro, it will show up in After Effects. But if I add text or effects, or if I do color correction in After Effects, it will not show up in Premiere Pro, because this is a one-way deal. And I am exporting it from After Effects. Now obviously you can do this the other way around, but again it's a one way deal. You can have something that an After Effects composition can feed into Premiere Pro, but you then need to export from Premiere Pro. Dynamic Link only works one way, and you can't then open up another composition in After Effects and try and link that back to Premiere Pro, because once Dynamic Link has operated, you will only be able to follow the route that you have started. And for After Effects, you bring in your Premiere Pro sequence into After Effects, work on it, and export it. One little piece of information that may be of interest to you is that After Effects works in the RGB color space, whereas Premiere Pro works in the YUV color space. So what will happen is that your Premiere Pro sequence will be exported and converted to the RGB workspace as it's exported out. Therefore, it's very important that down here in the bottom of your project panel that you set your bits per channel to the right level. So if you've got a nice high quality piece of footage in Premiere Pro, you don't want it to be kind of crushed by going to an 8-bit per channel output, so you might want to go to 16 or 32, and as you know, you alt on the PC option on the Mac, click, and change that to either 16-bit per channel or 32-bit per channel floating point to get the maximum quality out. So if you're worried about the quality of your Premiere Pro footage in After Effects, make sure that your bits per channel are at the maximum setting. This will slow things down, but it still works. Okay, I'm going to go back to 8 bits per channel just for demonstration. So how does this work? How do I get this Premiere Pro sequence into After Effects so that I can work it on After Effects and then go out? Well, it's very simple. You go to the File menu, you go File, and then you go down to Adobe Dynamic Link, and you have two options. I can either open a new Premiere Pro sequence or I can import an existing Premiere Pro sequence. But before we import the other one, let me just show you the new Premiere Pro sequence. And before I show that, I want to show you my composition settings. I have an unusual composition size here. If I go to Composition, Compositions, Settings, you'll see that my width is 3,500 pixels by height 2,000 pixels, so it's huge. Now, if I click OK just to close that dialog box, 
if I go to File, Adobe Dynamic Link, New Premiere Pro Sequence, what will happen is I will be given the new sequence option for Premiere Pro. It's got Premiere Pro open in the background. And notice the frame size. It is going to give me exactly the same frame size as the composition that I had open or the previous composition I used in After Effects. So that's one way of creating a sequence that's exactly the same size as your composition. You may not, however, want to do that. So it is worth looking at this. And obviously, you can change it to whatever size you want it to be. So we could say HDV and uh, change it to the appropriate size and use that. But do bear in mind that if you then use that in After Effects, it's going to be much smaller than my custom size composition, or it's not going to match up. So just be a little bit careful about that one. I'm going to cancel that for now and go back to After Effects. Because what I want to do is bring in that sequence in Premiere Pro as it stands. So, File, Adobe Dynamic Link, Import Premiere Pro Sequence. It says, OK, where is the sequence that you want to bring in? Now, you might turn around and say, well, heck, I don't know where the sequence is. Um, how do I do that? Well, you can navigate to it, obviously. I happen to know that it's in here, and it'll be in the uh, Animals, and it'll be in the Animals Project, and then it gives me the Animal Sequence, and I can click on that, and OK, and that'll open it. That's actually quite a long-winded way of doing it. So I'm going to show you a shorter way of doing it. I'm going to take the Animal Sequence, grab hold of it and pull it down to the icon at the bottom where it says After Effects, which brings up After Effects, and then take it to the project panel and let go. And all of a sudden, it's brought in as a footage item. And that is dynamically linked. And I'd like you to look at this icon. This is the dynamic link icon. However, um, I can't do anything with that until I create a composition based on this footage item. And what would you do with a footage item to create a new composition that's the same size, pixel aspect ratio and length? You grab hold of it and you drag it down to the new composition icon and let go. And there you go. You have your Premiere Pro sequence opened in dynamic link to After Effects. Now, I can move it and play around. But one word of warning, it will play slower than it would have played in Premiere Pro because Premiere Pro is operating in the background to render out the frames that you then see in After Effects. So it's not the fastest process in the world. But if I make a change in After Effects, I'm not going to be able to see that in Premiere Pro. But if I make a change in Premiere Pro, I will be able to see that in After Effects. Let's see how that's done. So go to Premiere Pro. Let's go to my first part of the sequence, which is this butterfly. And let's add in the fast color corrector. So go to Effects, type in the word fast, F-A-S-T, fast color corrector, click, drag, drop it onto that first clip open up my effects controls, open up my fast color corrector, and effectively I've got my levels here. And if I pull it down there, I'm gonna darken it. And now, if I then go over to After Effects, give it a moment, it shows up as darkened. So the change I've made in Premiere Pro has been reflected in After Effects, but if I now make a change in After Effects, you're not gonna see that in Premiere Pro. So if I was to, say, do a similar thing, select my layer, Go to Effects and uh, Color Correction and Levels, which is a similar type of effect. And I was to, say, try and uh, brighten it back up again. And I go to Premiere Pro, it's still dark. Just a, a little piece of information here. If you do work with these two projects, there's one thing you may have noticed, that when you've got your levels controlled through the Fast Color Corrector, if I move down, I'm darkening in it. And if I move up, I'm lightening it in Premiere Pro. I'm just going to turn that off so I've got the original clip back in After Effects. If I now go to After Effects and I start to move my levels controls, if I move down, I brighten it. And if I move up, I darken it. So just notice that the levels control in After Effects is actually the inverse way of working to what you have with the fast color corrector and the input levels in Premiere Pro. Just a, a, an interesting thing as we pass by. So. I can play around with this clip, I can add in motion graphics, I can even do stabilization. So for instance, if I went to my Windows workspace, and I went to my motion tracking workspace, I could then motion track this, choose the bit that I want to motion track, motion track it, and then have the motion track done. But do bear in mind it will work a lot slower, but this way I can have footage in Premiere Pro that I've imported to After Effects. I've treated, motion tracked, done whatever I wanted, stabilized, and then I need to output it through composition, add to render queue in the normal way. 
Okay, what about other items? Well, I've got Photoshop and Illustrator open down here. So let's see what happens when we bring in Photoshop and Illustrator files. Let's start with Photoshop. The best way to work with Photoshop actually isn't to try and open a Photoshop document and then bring it in. It's best to say, well, I want a Photoshop document that's going to be exactly the same size as this composition. So what I go to is File, New, Adobe Photoshop File. Click on that and it'll ask you to save it. So we can just call it PSD example click save and it opens it as a footage item in my after effects panel and uh, opens it up in photoshop now i've got the brush tool selected and i'm going to be painting in blue so on this brand new photoshop file which has already been saved called psd example as you'll see up here i can now draw some paint now if i go back to after effects and i was to pull this into my project so drop it at the top there I can't see anything because the Photoshop document hasn't been saved. So the first thing I need to do is go back and go File Save, Control or Command S, and then go back to After Effects and even so it doesn't show up because what you now need to do is right click on the footage and do Reload Footage. As soon as you do Reload Footage it brings in your changes. So you do have a link but it's not automatic, you need to reload the footage and it's exactly the same with the Illustrator file. I have an Illustrator open, let me just double click in the project panel to bring in an Illustrator file. Let's go to my computer, and there's Illustrator example. I'm going to pull that into the top and you can see it says example. And if I go over to Illustrator you'll see that there it is, example. Now I can select all this and I can change its colour, let's say do it to red. And again, the only way this is going to work is if I save it, File Save, go back to After Effects, select the actual piece of footage, the Illustrator file, right click on it and go to Reload Footage and then it's going to bring the changes in. So you do have a kind of dynamic link both with Photoshop files and Illustrator files so that you can actually change your footage but you just need to remember to reload it whereas when it comes to the Premiere Pro bits and pieces if I make major changes to that let's make a big change this time let's uh, really really darken it up and I go back to After Effects give it a moment and I don't need to reload the footage and there you go it's darkened right up in the background let's just turn these two off and you can see so no need to reload when it comes to the Premiere Pro dynamically linked sequence and then obviously output is exactly the same composition add to render queue and output in the normal way so I hope you found this tutorial useful, that you'll be able to use the power of Dynamic Link to bring in your Premiere Pro sequences, that you can even create custom sequences based on the custom compositions that you may have created in After Effects yourself. These are powerful tools, do use them, explore them, play around with them, get used to using them because they will in the long run save you an awful lot of time for this very simple reason. I did not need to render out my Premiere Pro composition. I did not need to render out my Photoshop document or my Illustrator document. All I needed to do was bring them into After Effects through Dynamic Link by reloading the footage for Photoshop and, and Illustrator, but simply dynamically linking this Premiere Pro sequence into After Effects. No rendering has taken place. The only rendering that will take place is on my final export. And that's going to save an awful lot of time. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.